Now after everything we did in the previous video, we found what r theta and phi should be. Now we need to do some checks to make sure that these vectors make sense. So the first check is to check that this is indeed equal to 1, because this is a, these are unit vectors, so they should have a magnitude of 1. So if you dot a vector with itself, that's just equal to the magnitude of that, uh, of that vector. So if you dot the r vector, Essentially, you're just squaring every single term you have here. So there's a theta. So you get something like this. So this term is essentially pretty similar to the denominator of these expressions we had in the previous video. So as before, you just group the sine square thetas together. You get sine square phi plus cosine square phi. That's just equal to 1. So you get sine square theta plus cosine square theta. And that's just equal to 1. So this makes sense, this makes perfect sense. So the dot product of r with itself should be equal to 1. And the second check we're asked to do is to check that uh, theta hat dot uh, phi hat is equal to 0. And if this is true, that means that these two vectors are orthogonal. They're at 90 degrees to each other. So taking the dot product, the i components say multiply with each other. So I have sine phi, cosine phi, cosine theta. And then the second component, I have sine phi, cosine phi, cosine of theta. And then there's no k component, so it says 0 times negative sine theta, so it says 0. And then obviously you see here, these cancel out perfectly, so it is equal to 0. So both of these vectors are orthogonal. So that completes the check. Now the third check is we need to find what the cross product of r and theta should be. So let's do just that. And because we know that these three orthogonals are all, uh, uh, these three vectors are all orthogonal to each other, and because we know that the cross product gives us a vector that is orthogonal to both of these uh, vectors, we would expect that the answer to this problem should be equal to phi or negative phi. So it's so either phi or negative phi is orthogonal to both r and theta. So we would expect this. Uh, the answer of this this cross product to be either phi or negative phi. So all we have to do is just to substitute it into the formula. Now let's just uh, take a look at the i component first. So the i component we have negative sine square theta sine phi and then we minus cosine square theta sine phi. And then for the j component, we take the product of these two. So we have negative sine square theta cosine phi minus cosine square theta cosine phi. This is in the j direction. And then we have a final component in the k direction. So we have sine theta cosine phi cosine theta, sine phi, minus sine theta. So we're, now we're taking the product of these two terms. Sine theta, sine phi, times cosine theta, cosine phi. And this is in the k direction. And uh, obviously, uh, this is equal to 0. And then here, again, you can group the, you can factorize the sine phi term out. You have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta which is just equal to 1, so you get negative sine phi i. And then I'll just dump the negative on the inside. Once again, you can pull out the cosine phi, you get sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, which is just equal to 1, so you get cosine phi j. And you see that matching this with the result that we have before, this is precisely equal to the phi vector, as we would expect it to be.